Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 3, Part 5. Welcome to Part 5. In this part, we are going to learn about two training methods. Training methods are methods that can be employed to actually change the weights in a neural network. We are going to examine Hebb's Rule and the Delta Rule. Both of these training methods can be used in a variety of situations. The delta rule actually founds the foundation for the backpropagation technique that we will learn about in the next class session. Hebb's rule is basically a reinforcement training method. Whatever the neural network has already learned, applying Hebb's rule is going to reinforce what the neural network already knows. The delta rule, which as I said before, forms the foundation for backpropagation, allows you to basically calculate an error and train the neural network for a specific pattern that you wanted it to recognize. This is used most commonly in supervised training. We will begin by looking at Hebb's rule. We will begin by looking at Hebb's rule. Hebb's rule is an example of a simple unsupervised training method. It basically reinforces what is already there, what is already learned by the neural network. We begin by looking at the equation that represents Hebb's rule. Here you see the Hebb's rule equation. On the left of the equation, you have the delta that is going to be necessary for the weight between neuron I and neuron J. Then you see that the weight change is going to be equal to the mu, which is the learning rate, of the input, which is a sub i, by the output, which is a sub j. So basically, you're multiplying the input by the output between these two neurons to determine the weight change that is going to be applied to them. This will reinforce whatever the output for the given input is between these, new, these two neurons. This is a form of unsupervised training. Now we're going to take a look at how this would be implemented in actual code. Here you see the code necessary to implement Hebb's rule. A function named learning rule is provided that accepts three inputs. The rate, the learning rate, which is the mu variable from before, the input, and the output. The implementation is very simple. The rate is multiplied by the input by the output. This will return the delta that is necessary over the weights between the input and the output. Now let's look at a couple of examples to see how Hebb's rule would be applied. In case one, we have a neuron I value, which is the input, of plus one the output is minus one. Therefore, Hebb's rule, and all three of these assume a learning rate of one, is going to be one times one times negative one. The weight delta will be negative one. That is, the weight will be decreased by one. This will reinforce the negative one output when a positive one is presented to this, to this neuron. Case two works similarly as does case three. We're just seeing different I values and different J values that Hebb's rule can be applied to. Each of these will produce a different change to the weight matrix as expressed by the weight delta. Now let's look at a C-sharp implementation of Hebb's rule. We set the breakpoint and execute the program. We can now see the output from the program. We're going to look specifically at epochs 4 and 5. We'll enlarge this so you can see them. Look at the result from epoch 4. The result is negative 64 and 128 for the middle two patterns that were presented. You can see negative 4 and 128. On epoch 5, it's negative 256 and 512. Applying Hebb's rule on each of these epochs has had the effect of enhancing what the neural network already knew. This basically strengthened patterns that were already in place in the neural network. Next we will look at the delta rule. 
the delta rule is used for supervised training. The delta rule works by exploring the differences between the anticipated output and the actual output for the given input. This allows the weights to be adjusted for the specified input to produce output that is more in line with what we expected. We will begin by looking at the equation that is used for the delta rule. And here you see the delta rule equation. The left side of the equation, delta w between i and j, represents the change that is necessary between neuron i and neuron j, the input and the output, uh, to affect this learning. This is the same as the way that the result is returned from Hebb's rule. Then we multiply 2 times mu, which is the learning rate, times the input for the particular neuron that we're currently looking at, which is i, times the ideal output minus the actual output for neuron j. You can see that this is a supervised training algorithm because we are actually taking into account the actual output and the ideal output. Whereas with unsupervised, there was no concept of ideal output. Now we're going to look at a C-sharp implementation of the delta rule. Here you see the training function. You can see that the parameters rate, input, ideal, and actual are passed in. Implementing the body of the delta rule is very easy. We simply multiply the rate by the input by the difference between the ideal and actual. This pretty much emulates exactly what was present in the equation. You'll notice the two value is not present. The two value is mostly unnecessary in code implementation as it can be expressed as part of the learning rate. Some equations show it, others do not, and simply bundle it in with the learning rate. Either way, it works out to exactly the same thing. The learning rate just simply does not have 2 multiplied by it. If you want that high of a learning rate, multiply it by 2 before sending it in. Now we'll execute a C-sharp application that demonstrates the delta rule. This is a simple console application. We set a breakpoint so that when we execute it, we can still see the console screen. C-sharp requires this. There you can see the output. We trained it for 100 epochs. Notice the actual results. We're training it with four patterns. We have an anticipated result for each of these four. This is because we are using supervised training. We provide the anticipated output always with supervised training. You can see that for the first three patterns, just look at epoch 100 at the bottom, the first three patterns we anticipate a zero, yet the output is negative 0.33 and 0.33. For the fourth one, the anticipated output is one, but the actual output is 0.66. It may seem like the training is not going particularly well, but it actually is. For the two values where it's zero, we have a much smaller value, actually half of the value that is for the anticipated one output. This basically shows that the output from the neural, neural network is converging to where we want it to. We just don't have enough weight matrices to actually learn this. In the next chapter, we're going to see a more advanced neural network that can learn this. This concludes class 3 of Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp. In the next class session, you're going to learn about the feedforward backpropagation neural network. This is one of the most common types of neural networks used. The backpropagation technique that is used to train the, the feedforward neural network is actually an extension of the delta rule that we learned about during this class session. We hope you will continue with class session 4. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C-Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.